Well, the Pixel 6a looks like it's going to be the most exciting phone of the summer. And I can qualify that statement because there's not a whole lot coming out this summer. So it, I mean, it's the only logical choice. And that's actually kind of funny. Um, I used to say that in the military all the time. People would be like, well, how come you got picked? Or how come this or whatever? Like, the only logical choice, bro. The only logical choice. And sometimes that makes sense. Uh, when you see something and it's like the heir apparent, the de facto, the right person at the right time, I think that's the Pixel 6a. And I think that it's also, it is the right time, the right phone, the right price for the moment because it's a mid-tier phone that has a much better price than a lot of flagship phones. It's coming at a very critical time. The summer, people are traveling, money is tight, the economy is in, in the dumps. So looking at a $449 phone that brings all the stuff to the table that this phone does is a particularly exciting proposition when you look at it from a tech perspective and somebody like me who likes Google phones. So I think that the Pixel 6a is going to be probably, could be the best-selling Google Pixel phone of all time to date. Now, people like the Pixel 6 and people like the Pixel here. Let me do this. It's a new thing. People like the Pixel 6 Pro and people like the Pixel 6. But the Pixel 6a, I think, it's probably got everybody's number because it's not going to have the stigma attached to it that the Pixel 6 and Pro had. I hope, <laughs> with all their issues, and that could be the only thing that kind of stymies some of the some of the sales at the get-go. Because normally, whenever you have the initial launch, everybody's like, Badoof! like flies on a donut sitting in the parking lot. They all want to go out and they get it. Well, this time, there might be a little bit of hesitation because of what's happened with the 6 and the 6 Pro, particularly with the software issues, the fingerprint sensor, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Seinfeld episode, if you remember that. So, looking at the 6A... There's a lot of good things going for it. Price tag, the power under the hood, it's going to have all these years of software updates and security patches. It's got last generation's pixel camera, which I don't think is a bad thing. I don't, especially if you want to do some near field uh, photography, shorter up close stuff. You have a shorter throw distance on that, so you can, uh, not really a camera term there, but what I mean is you can shoot things closer up, and that's important to some people. So I think the 6A is the right phone at the right price. It's the only logical choice this summer, and that's kind of been vacated. We, we don't really have a OnePlus cheap alternative. That kind of came out already. Not really holding a candle to the Pixel 6a. We've had some other things that have been talked about, like the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. Those are for the fall, not really competing with the 6a. You have the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV, which is three times as much money as the Pixel 6a, and it's not coming out until September. So that's kind of it. Usually we might have like an LG Stylo. We might have an April offering for LG. They're, they're not here anymore. So there's not a whole lot to get people excited. There's not a lot bringing value at a time when value is king. Right now, value is more important than anything. And I think Google saw the writing on the wall when they launched the 6 and 6 Pro. $599, $899, the prices were magical and they've been industry disruptive and changing. So looking at the Pixel 6a, $449, and you're going to get all the performance that you get with the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro with some slight modifications, a slightly smaller screen, which some people like, some pretty established cameras, which I think are fine, combined with the Tensor chip. You've got the Titan M2 chip in there. You've got a 1080p screen, OLED. What is there not to like? I think that it's probably going to be pretty good. Of course, we got to wait till we get it and get our hands on it. I'm going to test it. I think Google's still going to send me one. <laughs> I, I don't know. They haven't taken away my Team Pixel smoking jacket yet, uh, which is always a running joke every year. But yeah, I, I think that it's promising. And there's just, like I said, there's not a whole lot. So when you don't have a whole lot, you still have people who might need a phone. It's great for kids, great for teenagers, great for adults, great for basically anyone looking for an Android phone, about $400. And I, I think that there's some merit to that because I think there's a lot of fatigue, especially in the smartphone sector and the premium field. Right now, there's a lot less interest in $1,000 phones, $1,200 phones, $1,500 phones. $449 with a kind of a flagship branded name, a Pixel on it. It's going to be the most premium A-series Pixel phone yet. Going to have the new body design and all that other great stuff. I think that good things are going to happen with this phone. And I think that it will probably be the best Pixel selling phone ever. I do, especially once we get to the holidays, because once we get to the holidays, you're going to see that graph go upwards when people are looking for new phones and they see that they can get it, especially once the carrier deals and all that stuff. I'm hoping there is some good carrier deals and incentives when this one drops, just because that makes it even more lucrative and more 
uh, easy for people to get access to them because even $449 is a significant hurdle for some people to pay. Some people think $400 is too much for a phone. As much as I live on my phone, which is more than in reality half the time, I don't mind paying $1,000 for a phone because I get my use out of it. But some people don't use a phone like I do. Some people don't need a phone in the same level of sophistication, power, performance, and price, and all that expectation that I do. So something about the $400 price point, you divide that up over 24, 30, 36 months, you get some sort of a trade-in deal, you get some sort of carrier financing, you buy it and get it for free with the two-year agreement or whatever. That stuff makes a phone particularly attractive. So it wouldn't surprise me if Google decides to use some of their marketing horsepower that they threw at the Pixel 6 to go with the 6A and the timing, I think it just, it feels right for this phone. And yes, I know there's a slight delay. They've already announced it, but we're looking at, I believe July 21st is the day that you can start pre-ordering them. They'll show up in stores a week later. So I'm kind of expecting my model to show up maybe a week before that, maybe the week of the 21st, which will be good. I can test it out and tell everybody what's going on before the phone basically drops, but also definitely give you a full review while you're in the but definitely give you a full review within the return period for sure if you're having any issues. So we'll see what happens. Excited about it. And also, there's just not a whole lot out there. <laughs> We're kind of at a bad spot right now when it comes to phones, supply chain, market, economy, um, major players shifting their launch cycles and timing and stuff. It's just not, not as popping in the phone area as it usually is uh, historically this time of year or previously. I know there's always a slump during the summer. Like right now, if you look, I looked at the Google trends the other day because views, like views, engagement, comments, subscribers, they've been going south for basically the last month. So I decided to do something, pulled up on Google trends and I searched tech and you can see there was a huge drop off in April and then a cataclysmic drop off in May. Everybody's going outside. It's sunshiny. Uh, we don't have so many problems with what we've dealt with for the last two years. It's, it's more safer than ever to go outside in the last two years to go out and enjoy life not play on a phone, not go spend a bunch of money on electronics, go hit the swimming pool, go to the beach, go hit the golf course, go outside and play with your kids. It's a good time right now, especially at the summer. Everybody gets excited. So it's logical, not a lot going on during the summer. So cool times, better times ahead. And I think if you're looking for a phone and you're interested in the 6A, it could be just what the doctor ordered for some people who are looking for kind of flagship level performance and that higher level expectation, but at a lower price point. So that's what I think. But what do you think? Are you interested? Are you a Pixel fan? Are you interested in the Pixel 6a's as something that checks all the right boxes for you and your phone desires? We'll talk about it more as the time gets closer and the phone gets here, but that's all I got for now. So if you have any questions or comments, please go to the comment section. I will get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.